Hey friends, welcome to Friday Night Live. It's Friday and we're so excited to be here. Glad that you're here with us. And just to get you started, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit. Of, tonight we're gonna have a little bit of extended time. I'm gonna do two paintings. And you can see in the scrolling thing across the bottom that you actually have a chance for me to paint your reference photo in the second painting. This first one, I've already got a, a picture that I'm gonna be painting and I'll actually, I'll show it to you right now. This is what I'm gonna paint. Uh, the first, first uh, hour, but the second hour, um, I could be painting your photograph. And um, so just know that you can text us your your uh, reference photo and, and I'm gonna select in between, what right when I finish that first one and we're, we're giving it away, we're going to select uh, the second photo and it could be yours. And then the way that that's gonna work is you'll actually have an opportunity. Normally at the end of the night we give um, our paintings away. What we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna give the first one away. But if I select your photograph, we're gonna give you the the option if you want. Peter's gonna text you privately and you can buy it for $100. It's not much, it, well, <laughs> did I say 100? Tonight we'll give it to you for 100. I meant to say 150 because we have to pay for shipping, but whatever. We'll, we'll go with $100 and, but if you don't want it, that's fine. We'll, we'll put it out there, uh, we'll do another, uh, are we, did we say that we're gonna do? No, we're gonna ask you guys. Well, we might do something right. new tonight. We, we've got a couple ideas, but we don't know. So tell us where you're at. Where are you guys, where are you coming from tonight? Um, and I'm gonna get started here on this first painting, uh, but let me, let me just explain a little bit about what I've got going on. So I have just this simple bead box. This is a bead box that you can get from Arts Craft Store, but I put my paint in here. I've got white, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, quinacridone red, um, ultramarine blue, black, and I've got a gray here. I've got a Masterson Stay Wet palette, which if you don't know about that, it's really awesome. It's got a sponge underneath it, it wicks up the water. And then I'm painting on 11 by 14, this first one, and the second one is down underneath it. It's gonna be a 12 by 16. I use uh, flat brushes primarily, sizes four through 16, and uh, that's pretty much what I'm gonna use. Um, every once in a while I use a paint pen and when I sign my paintings I use one of these. So that's kind of the way that I, I keep uh, all my supplies. It's pretty easy if you look, there's a link down there if you're ever wondering. We try to make that accessible to you. But anyways, I'm gonna get started here but Peter's here with me. Yep. And he's gonna be telling me what you guys are saying and where you're from. So send us your text right now and let us know where you're coming from. Do you wanna just say the number that they should text their photos to? Really? Yeah, I don't have it in my head. It's 855 uh, 588 4278. 855 588 4278. It's scrolling across the bottom. So text Does it say there. love for art? Uh, no. Because that's the easy way to remember it. It's actually. If you were to do the acronym for it, it would be um, 855LUV, the number four, and ART, love for art. I chose that myself because I was thinking about what we're doing. Now this is gonna be a fun little painting. I'm gonna grab some kind of purple color here and I'm gonna start drawing in this, this scene. Um, we've got these trees that kind of come over a little bit over halfway. They come down, I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter so I can see it better. They come down in here. And how are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. So pretty got, fantastic tonight, because you're here. We have people from all over the place. Woo! All right, okay, so we got Karen from New York. Uh, all right, Andy New York from City. Michael oh. from Arkansas. Susan from Montana, Doug from Montana as well. Awesome. Obviously. Um, somebody named Pryor Design. Oh, Louise Pryor. Right okay. From California. Um, Jules P. Greetings from Camino. Nice. Allison from Sorry. Mississippi. She's back again. Allison. Um, Naomi Cooper from Lawrenceville. Awesome, Naomi. Uh, Lottie Stout from Lake Stevens. All right. Kylie from North Carolina. Connie from Minnesota. So great. Joan so from awesome. Yeah. Everywhere. Gail from uh, Nova Scotia. 
I'm waiting for Roger. I, I always am thinking about Roger because he's in Australia and he's it's always noon yeah. <laughs> for him. <laughs> I haven't seen him in here yet. Yeah, but, that's uh, okay. Maybe he'll stop by. Susie we'll... from California. Okay, nice. Well, welcome. Thanks for being here. We're so glad that you're here. How was your day? It's Friday. I always like Fridays because obviously we get to hang out, and this is like super fun. Yeah. And it's the end of a week. It's always it always just feels good. Did you guys have a good week? Get stuff done. Did you have a bad week? Just glad that it's over or pretty much over my week's been pretty good but I am excited about tonight because we're going to we're doing this this uh, for the first time like using a different reference photo that we're just choosing at random like not at random I'm gonna go through them but what I mean is it's not pre pre sent in or anything like that so if you didn't hear make sure that you send in a text to the number that I just said, which is 855-588-4278, right? Mm -hmm. Man, I'm glad I got that. <laughs> I don't even know my own number. Uh, and that's how we'll choose. We're, we're gonna look through those. I'm gonna look through and Peter's gonna be putting them in a folder right now on Google Drive. So if you send them in, I, I'm gonna look through them right when I'm done with this and we're gonna we're gonna start that second painting, yep. and it could be yours. So, anyways, Greg from Florida. I think he's new. I'm not quite sure. Greg, awesome. Welcome. We're glad you're here. So fun. I know that. Uh, I I I thought I saw some somebody inviting somebody on Facebook. I I and I wasn't familiar with who it was. I didn't didn't see, but we were glad that you're here. If it's your first time. Welcome if you're here regular. We're so glad that you're back. We love hanging out and Peter's my right-hand man in here if, if you uh, Now he's like a multitasking genius. He's got like His headphones on he's looking at the text that come in. He's Replying in the chat. He's got all sorts of stuff going on. Greg is a member of AU. Okay. Oh, there we go. Nice. Um, and I got permission tonight because if Peter's girlfriend texts in tonight or she ch chats in, I have permission to actually like say something about who she is. Now, isn't that fun? Because like I've been holding back. Last week I <laughs> I said something, but it was only known to like myself it turns out because Peter said that she had asked a question and I was like I was like what what did she what was her name again and I knew who it was but I just wanted him to say it again <laughs> he was teasing me. but he didn't know that I was teasing him so they just thought that I was like hard of hearing and stuff like that but anyways tonight I'm just gonna come right out if that special somebody Text in or chats in, I'm gonna say, oh, there you are. Cause my mom, honestly, it's kind of funny. My mom like keeps track and she's like, now has Peter's girlfriend ever chatted in or anything like that? And I'm like, no, actually she hasn't. Well, I mean, I said, I said, I guess I actually don't think she had at the time that she asked, but now I can come right out. So mom, if you're out there and you're watching, Now's your chance. Tonight's your night. So I oh, paint. There we go. Okay, there we go. What? Oh, I thought photos weren't going through, but they are. We're okay. 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 Cool. Cool. We're getting your photos, guys. So yes, we are getting your photos. If you're, so. if you want to send them in, that you'll have a chance on that second round. I'm gonna go through them at halftime. John Nelson, I told Peter to tell you not to beat around the bush because it's more weird that way. <laughs> well, John L, the first the first thing I I heard from some, I don't know if it was from you or from Peter. This was weeks ago. So everybody who wants to know, John L is Peter's girlfriend. So there we are. It's all out in the open. We can all say hi to John L now. 
We know who she is. But back in the day, like the first time that John L. was joining us, um, well, I don't think I knew the first time, but the second time, I I think Peter told me, don't say anything. <laughs> don't don't say anything about John L., okay? Like, she doesn't want you to, like, make a big deal. I've never made a big deal about something. Like, I mean, come on, guys. Like, I don't make a big deal about stuff, do I? <laughs> That's a joke. I do make a big it deal about like stuff. Like a week. Well, a sure. Week. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It would have been a little bit you know, premature maybe if I would have been doing everything that I would have done. <laughs> but that's what makes life fun, right? Is having that weird guy that, you know, doesn't know when to keep his mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Maybe it makes it fun or maybe it makes it annoying or <laughs> a bit bad. Of, a bit of both, depending on the situation. <laughs> Loving all your pictures, guys. This is really cool. Wow, I'm I'm excited, man. I, the the only sad thing is we're only going to be able to pick one, you know, to for tonight. But that doesn't mean we that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try again if if I don't get to yours this time, which more than likely, if there's more than, you know, one out there that I'm not going to get to yours, chances are. But it's kind of like um it's kind of like the when you enter an art show. It's like honestly, I've I I was in an art show a couple years ago, and um, I I was bummed because my painting didn't win anything. But I was overhearing the guy who had won the grand prize, and it was pretty interesting to me because he was saying that the painting that he entered into the art show, he'd entered it into several art shows through the last you know couple years and it had actually not even been accepted into some art shows it had like never won an award and then all of a sudden he enters it into this like probably like the 10th art show and it ends up winning the the grand prize right and like six thousand dollars it's or so, won five thousand dollars it sold for six thousand dollars and i was thinking wow like that's pretty incredible like but just the fact that it didn't make it even into art shows, like it got disqualified, I thought was really interesting. And so anyways, hey, yours might not make it tonight, but maybe next week it'll be the winning photograph. Whoa, Wendy. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your photos, Wendy. They look amazing. She's had like 10. Okay, cool. Nice. They look great. Um, but yeah, I did get them. Nice, very fun. Wendy, if you're still out there, could you send in your favorite out of them? Because because of the file size limit, it shrunk all the photos down, so Jed's not gonna be able to paint from it. Um, so if you could, could you just send like one or two of your favorites? I don't think that will, um, or they should stay normal size. Yeah, this is perfect, because guys, we got a new number. So your texts are getting sent to us right away. Last week we had trouble like yeah. sending a text and it took like 10 minutes for your response to get back to us. Um, yeah, we're pumped about it because... Yeah, so like Wendy, I see your text right now, so... Yeah, we had a bit of an issue. Well, when we chose winners, I don't know if you were here last week, but we chose we chose a bunch of winners last week because we I painted, what, how many, five paintings in six hours. And um, that was our painting marathon. And then we were trying to contact the people who'd won, and um, the the number was not sending the message until like 10, 20 minutes had gone past. So, like we were moving on from people who had won, giving their painting away to other people, <laughs> and then they'd text back and they're like, I just got your message saying that I'd won. So we're, Really, really excited to have a better system, better number that works a little bit more promptly. Um, Zoe, Zotroop or something like that. So okay. Peter, please say hi to Jed for me, Helen. Helene. Um, hey, Len? No, it's H-E-L-E-N-E. -E. Yeah, okay, hey, Len. Oh, it is? Yeah, maybe, yeah, that's how I'd say that, yeah. I got you. And then, um, 
Brian Walters. Hi, Jed. It's Brian and Ashley. All right. Hey, you guys. Glad to have you. I just invited them to come today. So, so awesome. Super, super great. That's fun. And then we got AJ Kathar. Hello from India. Whoa, all right, there we go. It's Saturday morning, 6.44 a.m. Okay, look at that. Well, that's awesome, so glad you're here. Super fun. Um, it's funny because, well, shoot, who was it? Oh yeah, it was, um, remember um, when, what was his name? Shalom. Shalom, it was like four in the morning and he was in Israel and it was four in the morning for him. I don't oh, know if you remember yeah, that, I, Peter. I remember that. Yeah, that that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. So we have 177 people watching already. Okay, all right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I, I haven't said this in the last couple minutes, so I'll say it again. This first painting is the the one that I'm doing right now is we're going to give it away at when I'm done with it. And then we're going to I'm going to start into another painting. But I haven't picked the reference photo yet because I'm going to pick one of your photos. Um, if you have something that you would like to see me paint and you think would make a good painting. Now listen guys, I have to say this because I, I'm picky. I'm kind of picky about what I paint. And it doesn't mean to, to not send it anything in. I'm just saying that I, I, I look for certain things in what I'm painting. And it, you know, like sometimes you see something that's really cool looking, but I might not paint it because it might not make a good painting or I might not be able to add anything, but that doesn't mean that it's not a really awesome um, photograph. So don't worry if I don't pick your painting or something like that, that doesn't mean that it wasn't a really awesome photograph. It just means that I look for certain things and some 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 photographs are so good by themselves that I dare not even touch them. <laughs> if you know what I mean because it's like I can't really add anything to that. So sometimes um, you know photos are like they live in a world of their own in some ways and um, but send whatever you think would make a good painting in and maybe I'll pick it and that'd be pretty awesome. And if your painting, is, your, your photograph is picked, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna give you the chance to buy the painting for a very reasonable price. Uh, it's, I mean, obviously these are more like demos than they are full on paintings, but they're still pretty dang cool. And um, like you, you wouldn't be able to buy any of this kind of thing in a gallery for anything like this. So it's it, it's gonna be a hundred dollars if your photo is picked. If it's not, we're going to uh, give other people a chance to get it. Um, and we were thinking about two ideas here. One is we always give our paintings away. Like I think I went back and I totaled up the number of paintings that we've given away since we started doing this of like a number of weeks ago. And I think we've given away 14, 13 or 14 paintings in the last uh, like several weeks, right? Because we gave away oh, so many last week. We gave away five paintings last week and um, it's been really fun. But we also were thinking, well, what if we did, you know, what if the person didn't want their painting? <clears throat> you know, what if we auctioned it? So we were thinking about that and I'm just throwing that out there for you to see because we haven't like thought, we don't know exactly how the, how, how the, um, the actual auction part, Peter, I mean we have an idea of how we can make it work, but we weren't even sure if, if people would be interested in that kind of thing. So we thought, well let's throw that out and see if people would be interested in that or not. Um, if, if, if you are interested in that, then we'll keep it in our heads as like, an alternate thing like if we if we choose a photo or if I paint something somehow and there's not a, you know if I not a direct somehow, winner already or the person who not, uh, whose photo you know, doesn't want to buy it for that, or the that person who, price uh, then maybe it goes to auction or they let, they let it go to auction but we want to just ask and see if people would be interested in that doesn't matter to us really, but we're just trying to keep things fun and, and change things up a little bit here and there. 
So let us know what you think of the auction idea so that Peter can kind of let me know. We'll look at the chat later and, and see if it seems like something that people would be interested in. And again, I'm not talking too much about what I'm doing because this is mostly just hangout time. But if you do want to learn how to paint and that's interesting to you, um, of course, come to Acrylic University. We, that's what we do there. We uh, teach people how to paint and we have a good time. And we have an awesome community and uh, we're so glad a bunch of you are, you know, part of our community already and we're, we're like, we feel like we have the best deal in the world because we get to hang out with people like you. Oh yeah, it's our pleasure. So what's gonna be kind of fun, I painted this painting, I painted a, 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 this scene before, um, but I'm doing it a little bit different this time. It's, it's always fun, like if, if I do paint the same scene, so, cause sometimes I find like, man, that, that scene was really fun to paint. Um, but then you think, well, what would, what would it be like if I, if I either painted this style or, or I, I used a little different um, approach to it, or maybe I chose different colors, you know, just change, like, think about what would the time of, what would it be like if, if the time of day was different or the, the season of the year? And you can do all sorts of cool stuff with that. So that's what I'm kind of doing this time is I'm, uh, I'm making some changes to the way that I approach it. And uh, it's fun. I like this scene. I can't remember. I think I took this photograph up on top of a, a little, it was at the end of a hike. Hey, who out there likes hiking, man? Isn't hiking awesome? Man. Woo! Hiking is best. You get outside, you get some exercise. At the end of a hike, I took this photograph and I think I was on a little island in um, just outside of Vancouver. I, I think, I think this is on top of a hill on Bowen Island. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that because it might be a different island or a different place, but that's where my bad memory. <laughs> In fact, I was just talking with Brian about my memory today. So if you're still out there, Brian, now you know what I'm talking about even more. Um, my thing is like, I, I was explaining, you know, I lived like many years of my life. I, I lived outside of where I was raised. And so like, we just moved back to Camano Island two, two years ago. And this is actually where I grew up. And so I see people that I, that I know or have some kind of connection to like I see people now, whereas like for most of my adult life, I've never ever, like for me to see somebody that knew me growing up is like so weird because I never lived anywhere even close really to where I grew up. So now I see people, but I don't remember very much about where I grew up and like old history and stuff like that. And I feel like it's because I didn't have anything to jog my memory for 20 years. And now I do. That's at least my excuse for it. Anybody else have a bad memory? I'm the kind of guy that like, honestly, if I don't say your name like five times to myself, right when I hear it Same. and I meet you, I'm sorry, it's not gonna be there. Yeah, I have to so be bad. so intentional about that. Is that you too, Peter? Yeah. Um, Todd Gardner says, love hiking. Louise says, hello from Ontario. Elaine Zink is here with us again. All right. Yeah, hiking is so fun, man. It's just like you get out, you get out to be, you know, outside fresh air. You're usually hiking something that's really cool because that's why people go there you know yeah it's there's really nothing that you don't i i don't know why i would ever not like hiking i can't really think of a reason unless i got stuck or i got attacked by a bear uh, that would make me not like hiking if 
Or if I got, actually what I'd probably want least is to like run into a rattlesnake and get bit all by myself when I'm somewhere. Oh yeah, that'd be bad. Well, you should never hike alone. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I guess I never do hike alone. Good. Okay, I'd like to hear if anybody's like been on a hike and run into like something that, that was scary. Like they're like, oh, I don't really want to be here right now. Like um, wildlife, something like that. Lucia says, hiking Acadia National Park is our happy place. Had to cancel this year due to COVID. Oh man. Yeah. And then Sue says, my memory is really good, it's just really short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's funny. E. Hall says, I'm bad at names. Oh, yeah. I feel you on that one. It's hard, it's hard. It's, it's like, I feel like sometimes I'm okay with names if it's like there's a, no, let me just say it differently. Sometimes it's easy to remember a name if there's a lot of reason to remember that name. What I mean is, if you are the person who is saying hi or welcoming a group of people, you are personally meeting, say, 20 different people. If you're one of the 20 people that just came in and you hear the greeter saying hi 20 times, you have a pretty good chance of remembering their name. Yeah. But if you're that greeter, it's like the chance of remembering 20 names is so small. But... Um, Sherry says, we hiked Lake Placid and got lost on top of the mountain in the dark. <laughs> oh man, that just happened to my nephew. He, they did something. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not fun. You should tell that story. Yeah, I guess my nephew was hiking up on Mount Rainier the other day and he he went they were trying to turn around because they ate lunch and I guess it started snowing. And then um but I don't know exactly how except it did make me it uh curious because the other day, like maybe about a month ago, I was talking with my sister and brother-in-law and they said that uh, this, I'll, I'll leave him unnamed right now. Um, this nephew has a little bit of a hard time with directions. And so I was just thinking, oh, maybe this was case in point, you know, like this, that's how this happened. Because they, they it started snowing and they got back on the path to go back to their truck and they turned the wrong way. They went the opposite way. They ended up walking away from their truck. So like they were three or three or four miles in, trying to go back to the truck, end up walking directly opposite of where their truck is and end up like having to hike in the whiteout blizzard kind of conditions where it's like raining down here where we are and up there it's like just snow, snow. Anyways, they made it. They're alive, but I think they were scared out of their minds. <laughs> so, um, we have a couple things. Okay, so Lucia says, actually my name is pronounced, pronounced Lucia. I was gonna guess that, but I was like, which way? <laughs> okay. Lucia or Lucia, what should I do? Um, guess wrong that time, but I will remember that. And then, um, Emma asks, how do you keep the paints wet? Um, so Emma, this is a Stay Wet palette and underneath there's a sponge, and this paper is special, uh, it's a special permeable paper, so it soaks up the water from underneath. And, um, and then, so like you have to soak this, but if you look up Masterson Stay Wet Palette, or if you follow the link that we have um, in the description, it will take you to a little page that shows all the supplies that I use and uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend this palette. If you paint in acrylics, I look at it as totally essential and uh, I would never paint without it. And they make smaller ones that I use when I paint outside also. So, good question. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, feel free to ask them. I'm not explaining what I'm doing because 
uh, that's not the point of this, but if you have any, any question at all, feel free to ask and I will answer it as well as I can. Remember that the second hour of this is going to be um, the potential of your photograph being painted uh, because I'm going to look through the, the photos that are being sent in at, at the break in between these paintings and, um, and I'll select one of them. Peter's going through them. Yep. Uh, yeah. Sue says hiked up in Kootenai Mountains in BC, saw a sign before entering the trail how to tell the difference between a black bear and a grizzly that was it for me <laughs> oh man yeah yeah i know sometimes the signs are scary enough aren't they it's like yeah oh man that's that's so funny i have a funny story about a a, a kid that i we took back from indianapolis on a road trip but I, I don't have time to go into it it's but it's pretty dang funny because he saw a sign about raccoons and it freaked him out <laughs> it was so funny oh, oh yeah yeah yeah, I'll tell it sometime, but yeah. oh man. Jed has so many good stories, guys. Jed's an awesome storyteller. Like, you will, you think you know him after hanging out with him nonstop for almost two years, but he always <laughs> surprises you with stories. Always. Oh, uh, maybe I'm just, I lost it in memory, but I made up for it in imagination. Hey, do you even know if my stories are true, bro? <laughs> I guess I don't. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I think they usually are. I'm actually a stickler for uh, for truth. Like, I don't like to exaggerate. Like, I used to be that guy that my, my friend would be telling a story, and I'd be like the guy that was like, it was not 16 inches. You know, the fish was only 14 inches. Stop lying, you know, like exaggerating. And uh, I think it made it not very fun for my friend. I have one friend in particular that I, I think is like, he, he would, he, cause he, I mean, he, he granted, he was an exaggerator, he, but, but he was a good storyteller and that was the thing. But I was always like the guy in the back going, it was not that big. So that's my way of kind of backwards saying, hey guys, you can trust my stories. They are down to the, yeah. they're accurate, man. <laughs> but as I say that, I'm like, you know what? I, there's probably, you know, we all tend to exaggerate. We all tend to do a little bit of that, but. Oh man, I'm excited about this pain. This is gonna be a killer one. So, uh, has anybody been able to do a little art this week? Any painting? What else have you been doing? And I don't, I mean like, that kind of came across like I was saying like, what else would you do or you know, I just meant that like, um, what else are you doing besides art too? Like, Allison has a question real quick. Okay, uh, question. How long does your paper last in your palette and do you clean it after finish painting? I do clean it, I just cleaned it. I usually leave it in here for, I mean I clean the whole thing, like I'll clean the top, but then I'll also, at least once a week, I'll take the whole thing out, I'll squeeze out the sponge, I'll put fresh water in the whole thing, yeah. and maybe every couple days if I have, if I'm able to because the water will get a little bit, let's just say nasty. And uh, so you wanna, you wanna clean it out and, um, and make it fresh as much as you can. So, um, my horse says I practice painting every day. Colleen says, yes, painting an oil still life and a large acrylic floral. Okay. Um, Laura says, yes, painting ceramics and guitar. Ceramics and guitar, nice. Mary D says, joined acrylic U, did value painting in three minis, also working on a painting of hydrangeas for my mom. Oh, cool. Yeah. That okay. sounds fun. Yeah, people are painting like crazy lately. We have, um, Gail, I've been working on a portrait forever. Oh, nice. Todd says, painting my parents' house exterior, cleaning and scraping, not the fun kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Sue says, I chalk painted an antique marble fireplace for our legion. Um, B Hall, working from home and yard work. And then we have somebody, let's see here. Kim Toy says, hi, I'm from the Philippines. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
Well, you know, it's it, it's kind of. I'm glad. Uh, you know, I I'm. Hey, E E Hall, I think that that's our friend Aaron. Um, and so I, I I will just say Aaron, unless you correct me. But anyways, um, Aaron, it's nice to be able to work from home, isn't it? I mean. Like, I, I just think, like, it's crazy how, like, so, so many of us have, you know, we've had to adjust our lives and everything like that and different stuff, but, and it, and it can be challenging, but I, I'm thankful in a lot of ways, like, that, that, that we, we live in a time where we, you know, there's an option for a lot of, a lot of people, you know, to be able to work remotely and stuff like that. Otherwise, man, there'd be nobody working. Although my mom just told me that on Camano Island where we live, we are actually in stage three. Today is the first day of stage three or phase three or whatever oh, they wow. call it. So that means that we're making that progress and uh, Maybe it just hit phase two. No, it's been a while. Oh, oh that's not homeless that just hit phase two. Yeah. Um Karen says I work on in a museum which are not open yet due to COVID. Vera working on my AU modules and getting ready for the St. Albert Market tomorrow where I sell um, McCrane, Macrain. Oh, sure. you know, I don't know either. I'm not that smart. <laughs> um, Peter, you shouldn't laugh at that, bro. <laughs> it just caught me up. I can't believe that you're making fun of me. I, I can joke about my own lack of smarts, but you can't laugh, okay? <laughs> um... Heather says, how do you decide what colors to mix together that end up going together so well? Do you have any tips or is this just intuition? Well, here's the cool thing, Heather. Uh, because I have a limited palette here, right? I mean, basically I've got a, a yellow, a red, and a blue. And then I have orange. But if I just close that, all these colors are gonna blend and make every other color like I can make orange out of the other colors, right? I just have that because it's a little bit brighter. I, ha I haven't used very much of it, but what I'm doing is I'm working with a palette, a limited palette, and all the colors become family because they get mixed together. And so I don't even, I'm not even, besides I guess I have pulled out of this a little bit, um, but the majority of the work is being done with a small amount of colors and that's what makes it all work together. It, it, it doesn't have, um, like, I'm not pulling from 20 different um, jars or tubes of paint to get my colors. I'm, I'm just pulling from, like, you know, the four colors and this one. So it's, that's, that's a huge, huge part of it, I think. Um, and, and it's a good way to keep your, your paintings simple and um, harmonized. So I, I recommend it, especially when you're learning how to paint. I, I recommend using a small number of paints because you end up learning how to mix colors way better than if you just were opening tubes every time you wanted a yeah. color. Okay, so let's pronounce macrame. And Vera says, it's macrame, those hippie plant hangers and wall hangings from the 70s that have made a comeback. Oh, nice. That's awesome. <laughs> Doug says, here goes the sky. Well, yeah, actually this is the land, but, but, uh, there, cause there's a little bit of hill back there, but it's still pretty light. And so it, it looks kind of like the sky. Yeah, it's... I, I really do find that it's funny because back when I when I was learning how to paint, I, I never used a limited palette. But I've learned that it's very, very helpful. And I enjoy it so much now because I don't... It takes away some of the thinking. Don't have to even like think about the colors that I'm mixing as much. I just go with um, whatever I can mix and um, have a lot more confidence that way. Ah, I got rid of a branch that I didn't really want to. Don says, this is my de-stressor watching you paint. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, glad you're here. 
Nancy Dolfer says, finish the cloud painting today. Nice. Oh, cool. Does that mean from the cloud module? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, it's it's fun. I I have to say that you know it's really fun for us. I said I say this you know periodically on here, but it's really really fun for us to see what you guys are working on, and we're so dang proud of all the the stuff that you guys do because it's it's pretty it's pretty fun for us. And this, if you don't know what this is, and you haven't seen me do this before, or you know, maybe you haven't seen other, other artists do this, but this is called negative painting, and it's basically when you paint the, you, you cut out the shape of a, a more, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to come up with here? Foreground object with the background color and um, and that's what this is because basically I'm cutting around all these uh, these foreground trees with the background color Doug says what caused you to choose blue for some of the trees were you trying to push uh, some back oh you mean like this I'm I guess it's a it's a blue it's a blue green um, and I was actually going more for the shadow part of the tree. That's what I was I was trying to think of was was like how can I how can I kind of get the shadow um, effect on that. But I do want some of them to appear like they're at least like not as in in um, in focus and detail and stuff like that. I want them to be more subdued. Peter, like like he said, I don't know if you were here last week, but somebody asked Peter if he paints or, or something like that. And he was like, man, I've watched every video that Jed's ever made. You know, like he edits all the videos. So he like, he knows probably more than just about anybody besides Renee about like how I think and like, about the you know like process of painting yeah. <laughs> because he's seen so many of the videos I've just listened to him say like he's like uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> like like he already knows what I'm gonna say before I say it yeah I gotta start painting some time I wanted like there have been several times in my life where I wanted to be a concept artist so okay that's that's a different world, isn't it? It is like, a, it is that's, a bit different. I don't think I would do that anymore. I think I would like to just paint like you do. Oh man! Did you guys hear that? Peter's he's changed his career goals. <laughs> <laughs> Not career goals. I know, I know. Um, but yeah, I love saturated colors, and so that's one of the reasons I like Jed's painting so much. Is they're also vibrant, saturated, which is so good. Totally my speed. That's cool, man, that's cool. Okay, I need to come up with a little bit more of a whitish color for some of the sky. And, you know, in my tradition, let's, let's make that a light yellow. That sounds fun. Sharon, Sharon Book says, hi Jed from Indy. Hey, Sharon, good to have you. Very fun. Then Don says, was drawn in by only a three to five second glimpse of a painting on HGTV. I had to track down the artist because of the light. Love the light slash shadows. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. We've had so many people over the years that have come through because of that three to five seconds of... Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, so we're gonna be giving away this painting and then the painting he paints that's one of your pictures, um, we'll do something with that as well, so stay tuned. Yes, we will. Yep. Good times. One of our big goals is always to think of things that can be fun for you. So hey, part, 
uh, now I just thought of this like you know if you have ideas like if you think of stuff that would be fun or you think it could be a good idea feel free to throw us your ideas because uh, a lot of times we're looking for feedback on on what we do anyways and um, and so like if you you know just had you know threw out some of your ideas you know it basically is the kind of feedback that we're looking for so yeah uh, feel free we like hearing from you Adrian asks do you have any favorite artists or who has influenced you the most my favorite artist um, well I guess I I'll show you a book because I've got it here but this is one of my favorite artists right here, Sergei Bongart. He's dead. He's a he was a Russian artist who who moved. He he was actually I believe from the Ukraine, but he he painted um, these very big paintings. And what I like about his paintings is his use of color, but also how big and bold his brushstrokes were. Because like I always look at this book and think, wow. You know, it's very loose looking. And this painting is actually three feet by four feet. So if you were to see it up close and personal, I mean, I'm sure it would just look like it crazy how bold and big his brush strokes were. But it also like, you know, they all make sense. And so it's, it's a, he's one. Um, I have studied under some artists who are uh, really awesome too. Like uh, Mike Svob was the first guy that I ever studied under, and uh, he kind of like got me started in art. I would say like I didn't have a, I mean I shouldn't say in art, but in acrylics and in the kind of painting that I do now. Uh, that was kind of like the the place where I started. And he's a great guy, great artist. He he lives up in Canada and lived i lived kind of close to where he he lives um so that's kind of how we got connected was because um i saw his work in a gallery so he's a great guy great artist um and then another guy another canadian artist named robert gen he has passed away also um but he was uh, another really big influence in my life in terms of art uh went to couple work well I guess just one of his workshops but I took a couple from Mike Svob and then I took a workshop from um, uh, Ovanis Barbarian and I learned some cool stuff from him um, every every workshop that I've ever taken has been super super helpful I've studied under Carolyn Anderson a really great artist from Montana um, I studied under John Michael Carter He's an oil painter uh, from Kentucky. And most recently I studied under John Poon, who is, he is a, he's an artist uh, from, I think he lives in Utah right now. And, uh, but honestly, one of the, one of my like recent um, heroes in terms of uh, acrylic paints, because, because all of his work pretty much now is in acrylics and um but he didn't start out working in acrylics he started out painting in oils and um but his work is just fantastic and and um and he's also a super super amazing instructor i learned so much from him but really one of the biggest things that i learned from him was how he cared for his students and he like he just, you could just tell that he cared about our success. Uh, that, that was what was driving him, you know, to teach us. And so I highly recommend him um, as an artist, as a teacher, super great guy. Um, DBY says, I'm still doing the coursework, but, oh, Donna, I'm still doing the coursework, but do you have a session in negative space painting? Oh yeah, it's a, that's a, I think that that's, it's funny because Laura did that. Um, Laura's a friend who's also a, a student and um, she did the, she hated the negative space idea like at first. But then I remember like um, at some point later, I remember like 
seen her or she said something, she made a post or she did something and I remember like, it seemed like her attitude towards painting the negative shapes had changed significantly. And I think it's that kind of thing that you might not like it at first. It might be really difficult, it might be tricky, it might be hard, but I recommend people trying it because it can change the way that you paint and there's really no substitute for it. Like you can't, you can't fake a different thing and get the same results. You just kind of have to go with it and try to, try to figure it out. Lots of good pictures to pick from, Jed. Cool. I'm excited to get in there and look at them. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for sending them in. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, totally. And we're almost done with this one. I've, looking at my watch, looks like I've got a few more minutes here. Mm -hmm. So I'll see what I can do. I need to come through with another round of sky color that'll probably be the last thing i do and then we're going to pick the second one michael asks have you trained any emerging artists have i yeah well yeah i've got we've got lots of uh well i guess i think of all of our students as emerging artists but i guess i don't know um what you mean by emerging artists so i shouldn't say yes until i know what you mean But yeah, I mean, I look at, like, we've got, we've actually got a lot of people in our, um, and I can't say that I, I am the reason that they're amazing because uh, that's not the case at all. But, but it's pretty awesome to see, you know, I, I feel like uh, when it comes to um, art and training and like, learning is like I don't know if this is the case I mean maybe back in the day and maybe there are cases today still where somebody learns like primarily from one person mm -hmm. and and they like are an apprentice or that kind of thing and and that basically is is their training but it seems like today there's at least in my experiences is, is a little bit more like what I would what I described it's like I've studied under a whole bunch of different artists and each one of them has made a significant impact on my, on my um, approach on totally different areas of, of painting. Um, and I feel like maybe that's a little bit what it's like for most artists now is like I, I would definitely not ever take credit for somebody else, you know, like because I, I don't, I, I can't even, I, I wouldn't even know if I've had, like what, what is the impact that I've had on another artist unless they told me that, you know, like I'd had some major impact on them. I wouldn't even know. I would just imagine that I'm probably one of a bunch of um, influences and, but that's pretty awesome. I like being a part of, you know, people, people's journey and a lot of times you know um, it's fun to be able to see what what people are able to do and a lot of what I I believe so firmly and you you probably know this if you've been around me at all but I, I really do believe in the power of encouragement and yeah. think that so often what we we don't need just like somebody to tell us what to do. We just, we actually, maybe more than that, we need somebody to cheer us on and say, hey, you're doing awesome and keep up the good work. Because sometimes, I think when we do something creative like this, it, it, we can be our own worst critics and we can be so harsh on ourselves and, you know, tend to only see negative things where anybody else is looking at our painting They'll see, they'll see lots of good things about it. Yeah. And we need those people to encourage us. So I look at my role as being like 
half instruction and half encouragement. Because most of what I find is like people who are encouraged and motivated, they'll keep working at it and they'll get better. Yep. And if you're not encouraged and motivated, then you'll stop because you don't want to do it and you don't get any better. Yeah, there's this, there's a quote from this book and the title of one of the chapters is Be Stingy in Your Criticism and Lavish in Your Praise. Mm. And um, the chapter goes on to talk about all these really famous people that were so close to quitting, but somebody encouraged them in some small way. Oh, really? And so they stuck with it. That's pretty cool. And it talks about all these people that we might not know if it yeah. were for people in their lives that encourage them. So. Yeah. I, I, I honestly think that that's true almost of everybody, don't you? It's like, oh, yeah. we just don't know the stories. We don't know how they got encouraged. We don't know. Totally. That's that must be a pretty awesome book. I, I'm. Is, was, what's this called? Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, that was what it's called. I yeah. thought you said that there was a. It was called like. Seven Habits of. No, I thought you you just called something something else. Oh, that be was stingy the, with your. That was the name of one of the chapters in the book. Oh, oh, a chapter in the in the yeah. book. Oh, okay, gotcha. But that book is a good read. It teaches empathy. Okay. I'm just kind of doing a rock pattern down here because I, I like this uh, idea of having some rocks that are interesting. Okay, now let's see. Time. Okay. It's about time to. Give away this penny. Well, how are we gonna do it, bro? Uh, we don't have a keyword. We don't have anything set up. No, I can still pick randomly. Though. Can you? Can you? Can you set up a keyword? Um. Or no. I could, but the people have to retext in. I've already had a bunch of people. Oh, okay. Oh, so how are the? But how are we gonna pick a random? Just have a text the keyword. If I can, if the company let me set one up. <laughs> okay. Why don't you try? Yeah, yeah. See what it is. And don't say it out loud yet. Yeah. <laughs> Lest we get bombed. Bombed with text. It's always funny when when we're giving it away because I usually actually tonight I don't I don't have my phone in my pocket but I oh. usually. You, okay, cool. I usually have my phone in my pocket and, and I'll start feeling like people, like I know people are texting because it's like all of a sudden my phone is just going crazy like. Text, 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 text. Okay, what's the word, dude? Do you want to tell them? Yes, the word is forest. Okay, so text the word forest to 855. Uh, five, five eight eight four two seven eight yep. eight five 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 two eight five eight eight four two seven eight. Sorry about that. It's scrolling across the bottom. It's scrolling across the bottom. And I'll put in chat for you. So if you want to win this painting, text forest to that number. Text the word forest, and we're gonna choose randomly here. And then I'm gonna look through the um. The photos, we'll see who gets to get their painting, their, their reference photo picked. You know what's great about that for me too is that I don't have to pick another photo. I've got lots of photos to, to pick, but um, it's kind of fun to do somebody else's, you know? It's kind of fun to see what somebody else thinks is interesting and is willing to share. Now here's the deal, I hope you know that if you sent your paint picture in that I'm gonna paint it, but also you'll probably have some other people painting it. Now, if for some reason you're not okay with that and you didn't know that, then when I pick it, you better say, I don't want you to paint that or else it's gonna be uh, out there. 
And I'm gonna paint it, but then probably somebody else is gonna paint it too. Hey, is anybody painting with us tonight? I mean, I didn't ask that earlier. I'm imagining that there is somebody out there somewhere in the world. So we have 580 people watching. Right nice, now. hey, welcome everybody. Sorry that I didn't get to say hi to everybody personally as they came in. Yeah. But we're super happy. And we're going to be doing the second painting here in just a minute, but we're gonna give this one away first. Yep. Um, let me let me just I'm just looking at it sometimes um, I can see something that I need to do on it but hey if you wanna you can we can give this away if you wanna maybe 30 more seconds for them to text in yeah sure. okay 30 more seconds text in the word forest I'm in it. We'll give you a minute. Uh, to 855 588 Four two seven eight eight five 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 eight eight four two seven eight, and that spells. If you were to do the little acronym thing that I made up, it, it you could just do eight five five love L U V four the number four art A R T. Isn't that awesome, man? Love for art. Yeah, that's, that's our number. Remember when you text in, text just the word forest. Yeah, just text the word forest. Don't text anything else or it won't automatically input your your phone number into the, the contest. That's a very good detail. So say the word forest and nothing else. Because if you add like ha 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 or I hope I win forest, or something like that it's not gonna enter you it's gonna backfire on you don't say forest and pick me because that's gonna backfire on you all those so, kinds of things um yeah so what's nice is you guys are getting confirmation messages right away because we switch numbers so you actually know if your text went through okay nice Sheila says, you're so positive, Jen. Really appreciate your vibe. Oh, yeah. Glad you're here. I don't know if... I, when when you said Sheila, I know a Sheila, but I don't know if this is the Sheila that I know. I'm, I'm guessing if she... Sheila Cowley? Okay. No, I don't. Well, nice to meet you, Sheila Cowley. Okay. So, let's see here. Yeah. I'm ready. Are you ready? I am. Who wants this painting? We're gonna give it away right now. And I'm gonna switch and look at the camera because I wanna just be the first one to say good job. Who is it, Peter? Um, I guess uh, Oh, he's, oh, we're almost there. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna keep painting just for another minute while he's getting really close to getting us to that place. Yep, okay. Yeah, how fun, man. Uh, oh. Shoot, I just realized I, I could use some grays down here. That's, I think, what I, I might like to do is put put a little bit of gray in. That was actually something that I learned from Robert Genn first, and then it was really drilled into me from, from Ovanus Barbarian was how to use grays. I, I've i told this story many times. Um, I'm sure if you've been around, you've probably heard me say it, but one time I was in the workshop with Ovanus Barbarian, and he... Um, he, I'm just looking at the screen. It's funny because like my angle and like what I see and then what what's coming through the screen are sometimes a little different. So it's kind of good for me to keep track of what's going on. But I was painting away and I had all these bright colors going on and he took away, he said, I don't want you to paint anymore. He said, you just have to mix grays and I had to mix for like an hour all these different grays, but it taught me the importance of neutral colors. Not everything needs to be or should be really vibrant. You actually want your paintings to have some neutral colors because that's where uh, your eye can rest. And we all need a little rest, don't we? 
we can get so tired and burnt out and that's kind of the way our eyes can be if there's nothing for us to rest upon in a painting okay Peter what do you have for us you there yeah so all right we do have a winner were you texting them? Uh, do you want me to text them first? Well, I don't know. No, we announce it. Let's announce it. And then. Alright, so you want to switch camera? Yeah, I do. Alright. Okay. So winner is Pat Bell. Pat Bell, you're the winner. Now, we need to get that confirmation message from you saying your name. I mean, just say, yeah, this is me, Pat Bell, and say um, your address because we need to ship this painting to you don't you just text that to us at that same number you don't have to put anything in the chat or anything but text it to us and congratulations pat now we're gonna have an awkward silence as i look at my computer and try to go through the the photographs so i can pick um pick one now see if i can do this without being totally weird here I, if I had a better view, I could just give you like a blurry view. Hey, look at that. Blurry view. You can see my hands, but you can't really see what I'm doing. Okay. Let's see. I have to go into our drive somewhere in here and find this thing. Congratulations, Pat. You just won a Jed Dorsey original. That is awesome. Okay, Peter changed it back for me. He <laughs> thought that my idea was a really bad one. Okay, oh wow, look at this. Oh my goodness, there are some good pictures in here. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna look here. One of the things that I'm looking at right now, first off, is dimensions. Um, because I have to paint something that is going to be, um, boy, oh cool. I guess I could change, oh that's nice. Very cool, very cool. Okay. Okay, let's see here. You're very welcome, Pat. Okay. Now, I am, I've narrowed it down, guys. I've narrowed it down. I'm just looking at one more round through, and then I'm going to make my selection here. Okay, well, okay, okay, I think I, I've, I've made my selection, guys. Should I show it? Yeah, I'll show it. I can, I can show it. Do you want to see it? I don't know whose it is, but I'm going to do a little bit of editing to it. Um, but I'll tell you what, actually, my choice was, was um, a lot of you sent in vertical images and I've got a landscape oriented kind of setup here. So that was actually one way that I, I just kind of looked past a, a bunch of um, photographs because of that. But here is the one that we're gonna do right here. Now I'm actually gonna take out the truck and I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the foreground to just simplify. I mean, it's pretty simple, but I'm probably not gonna put like all all in there. But what I drew, what drew me into this was, of course, the beautiful sunset or sunrise. I'm imagining it was a sunset because you were there, and you were awake. <laughs> so here we go. Um, and Peter, do you want to? Can you find that? Yeah, yeah, I can. And you can add it to this as a second. Yeah, I think that's Wendy's, Wendy Fleury. Okay, cool, well, awesome. Well, Wendy, good job. So, you have the option, basically, of if you wanna buy this for $100, which is, you know, your choice, 
or we'll figure out how to give it away in the end. Um, but you, we, we thought, you know what, we should give the person who, if we did a straight like giveaway, the chance of the person getting it would be like really small. If we, you know, we, we don't know exactly what to do. So we decided, well, we'll give them a chance of getting it. But um, if, you, if you don't have that or you don't want to uh, do that, we will either uh, do another uh, uh, um, giveaway or we'll do some sort of an auction or some something to... Wendy already says I'll buy it, so... Okay, okay. All right, well, Wendy, it's done, too. There it is. <laughs> You're the winner of a there it is. Black can. See, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. That was the easiest sold painting I. Now I'm gonna sell another one just like this. I'm gonna choose another photograph. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, cool. Well, so here we go. What I'm gonna do is on this one, um, I'm going to draw it in again, and this time I'm going to. Um, Basically, I'm keeping the, the design that's here. You know, we've got these tree branches that come down and kind of come over. And this, this land is gonna come up about here. And then there's some more bushy things in here. There's a horizon line of water that comes through here. And then, and by the way, guys, I screwed up tonight because I, I was supposed to say 150. And I said 100, so we're totally honoring that, but I'm just letting you know that if we do that in the future, uh, the 100 is is not the price that we'll do in the future, just just so you know. Because you know what, I mean, it's it's totally fine. Actually, I don't care. We, we give them away, so um, I, I shouldn't speak so, so soon. I honestly don't care. This isn't about money. I was just thinking because my wife had said, oh, well, do 150 because of uh, shipping or something. And I was like, oh, I get in trouble from her if I, you know, deviate from what she said. She'll be all worked up over it. I'll have to spend the night out with the, well, we don't have a dog. I'll have to spend the night out with our little cat outside. Hey, if you think I'm being serious now, you really need to know that I'm not. I have the most wonderful wife. She's so awesome. Okay, so what I, oh good, Peter. Hey, Peter, come on over, bro. It's Lake Ontario, Canada. Oh, awesome, okay, come on over, bro. All right. Peter's right. gonna bring, bring, our, bring our little cat, who will be my, you know, when I'm kicked yeah, out into good. the cat house. Um, this is silver. This is silver. Right here. So, silver's our little kitten. He's he's like four months old now. We got him on, mm -hmm. he was born on February 11th, so. He's been chilling March, in my April, room all May, day long. June. Awesome. Now, we don't let him roam in here. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We got to catch that cat. Okay. That cat is a little bit of a problem. Uh, he'll get up on my, my, uh my palette and he'll walk around like somebody won a painting the other week and he had gotten up on on the palette after we left and I didn't notice and then he took a bunch of steps on the painting <laughs> and he he put his his paw prints on there it was actually pretty funny and we were we were like you know oh look at that thanks bro I need a little help here you guys are looking at the top of my head Yeah, so Lake Ontario, how, how cool is that? Did you know that I am a dual citizen? I am a citizen of Canada and that is the truth because we lived in Vancouver for 10 years before we moved back to the States, 10 long excruciating years no i'm just joking i love canada ah <laughs> uh, man yeah my wife is from edmonton alberta and uh we have never lived outside of bc ourselves but um, we've traveled to like i guess the farthest east we've been is Quebec City 
which that was so cool. I gotta say, if you wanna go somewhere that will feel like you went to Europe, at least that's what I understand, go to Quebec City. Such a cool place. And they speak French, which adds to the feeling like you're not in North America. So I'm putting a lot of grays in. What question can I ask, Peter? I don't even know what people are talking about right now. I'm sure they're talking about something. Uh, Doug says, wow, Peter really exists. Jed's not a ventriloquist after all. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Yeah, Peter does exist. He's a real person, man. And he's got a real girlfriend and her name is John L. And she was on here earlier and she said, that I could say her name in public. So, things are changing, man. Like, they're growing up so fast. I feel like Peter's changing on me. Like, he was just a young boy when I first met him, and now he's becoming a man. Love. You sound like you're talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they grow up so fast. Oh, man. Yup, yup. Good times on a Friday night. Flint says, you're so good at art, bro. And a bunch of hearts. Oh, thanks. Um, art is fun, isn't it? It's like, to me, it's a gift. Oh yeah. What were you gonna say? Um, Sue says, an artist slash teacher here, her tabby cat frequently gets in the pose when teaching. She paints him into some of her other work. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Cats are so funny, man. Like, it's really been fun for us to have a cat because we haven't had a pet forever. We have an eight-year-old daughter and she normally brings Silver in to, you know, get his, you know, his little time on camera. Um, but she must be watching something or something. But it's been really nice because she loves animals and but we never were able to really have pets and uh it's been super fun to have little silver he's been such a good good cat and we i know that some people will probably need to sign off like if you're on the east coast or something and you're not able to stick with us the rest of the time so if you if you have to do that that's okay but i just have to warn you that we're gonna do the most cool and fun things when you're gone and you'll regret leaving. <laughs> Just joking. Lovely. Wouldn't, isn't that the way it is? Like, you know, like, I remember just like being at parties or being places like, or just something. It's just something like, you're just like, I don't know. And, and you think like, sh what else is going on? You know, it's that fear of missing out or whatever they call it, right? And it's like, you get that little fear like, if I leave, is something good gonna happen? Or the flip side is like, is there something else going on that, like where is, where are the other people? Here's, here's a, here's where I had fear of missing out when I was in high school. I was in P, uh, weight training class and one of my good friends was also in that class and I showed up for class and he wasn't there. And I thought, oh, where is he? And I knew exactly where he was. I knew that he was, cause I'd heard these other friends talking about how they were gonna skip their class or skip whatever they're doing. And, and they were gonna go to this one guy's house and sit on the beach, you know, or whatever. They're gonna go hang out at the beach. And so I knew when my friend wasn't in class, I knew that that was where he was. And um, I, I got all bummed out because I'm like, oh, here I am, I'm stuck in weight training class and my friend's not here and everybody's out there and they're having the best time and I'm the only one who's not there. And I got all kind of worked up inside and I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna walk out of class. I'm just gonna leave. And so, all like right after the class began, I walk out of it and I don't tell anybody, I don't say anything, I just, I just go off. And I just like go downstairs to the locker room and I 
put on my normal clothes and I leave. I just walk off campus. That was back in the day when, you know, there wasn't any, anything that there was, it wasn't one building. It, we had a, like an open school. Anyways, I leave. Not smart. All about, I'm missing out. I go out to the friends and of course they're all out there just like I thought. They're all hanging around. So I hang out with them and then of course we're like, well, what do you want to do now? And these were mostly guys that I played baseball with. And it was like the end, our baseball season had ended. We did not make the playoffs, but the girls team, uh, the softball team had made the playoffs. And so all the guys are thinking, well, why don't we go back in and we'll go to the girls softball game. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I'll go back in with you guys. So we all go back into the high school. <laughs> and I'm like walking in to the softball game, open parking lot, long distance between me and anybody else, you know, but I'm walking in with these friends and who spots me from the far side of the parking lot, walking the other direction, like, he wasn't even going to the softball game. My weight training teacher, who happened to be my football, one of my football coaches, and like, like he was a, and he just yelled my, he just said, Dorsey. Oh no. And I just kind of like acted like I didn't see or hear anything, and I don't know. I probably looked up and I was like, oh. And I just kept walking. Okay, I think it's all fine and dandy until the next day when I show up for class or like for school and I'm I just walk into the school first thing I honestly first person I see who do you think it is my weight training teacher I mean it was such a dumb thing that I did I like my senior year I had probably like three periods where I was in the classroom with like I was a TA in one class then we had a lunch in like we basically spent with that teacher and one other uh, teacher and then then I had weight training like three classes in a row and they were all with that one friend and anyways I don't know what I was thinking I just like skip and then I'd come back and everything would be cool I don't know what you know it's like the kind of thing like they say that the male brain doesn't like fully develop until you're 25. Did you know that, Peter? I did not. Yeah, like females' brains, I think it's like 18. Their brain is like fully developed. A man's brain is like not fully, even physically developed until they're 25. That explains <laughs> it explains a lot. But anyways, it explains a lot about my life. Uh, and I walk in, he sees me, for, he just says, he just says, Dorsey, come with me. And he just, he's walking really briskly into his office. And I, my heart had just dropped. And like reality check for me, I was like, oh man, dude. Oh, no. And um, so anyways, I walk in and he just, he's, he is not happy and he, he let me know. But I have to say that it was, it was actually um, a learning, point for me like I actually learned something that day um, and it was good it was good for me but I the funny thing about it was basically he's he he's like look you know I mean obviously like he's he's the teacher and if I show up for class and then I leave like he doesn't have any idea where I am he's responsible for me because I came to his class that's that's the way he looked at it. Like he's responsible for me and I just go off and walk off. So uh, he laid into me, but here's the thing. I was such a dork back then. I was like, well, Pat wasn't here. <laughs> I like blamed it on my friend, Pat <laughs> dragged him into it. Oh, no. Like, I guess I was I just, no I was just trying to like, tell him why I left, I guess, like, cause he, he probably asked me like, what were you thinking or whatever, right? And I was like, uh, I don't know, I had no reason, right? Like, and so I, I, I said something about my friend and uh, anyways, so for the, the rest of school, there was probably like two weeks left. 
me and my friend, uh -huh. every day after school, we had to run like five miles. I don't know exactly how oh far it was, God. but it was like a long distance. And he, yeah, it was just like, it was, we, it was, it was really, again, it was a learning experience, but I don't know what got me talking about that, man. Um, Todd Gardner says, why do coaches and gym teachers call us by last names like we're in the army or something? <laughs> Cause in, in sports, like that's, it wasn't just him. It's like all my old high school friends, like basically called me by my last name and I, I forget about that until until because I never see them but then like if I do see them they'll they'll refer to me as Dorsey and it's like oh my goodness that's weird I don't know how that happens it's like maybe it's because it's the name that's on the back of uniforms and so it's and maybe it's because your last name is more unique than like Mike and there's like five people that turn I don't know That's a good question, Todd. I think it's funny how, how things are the way they are. And sometimes we don't even like really think about it. We're just like, yeah, I guess it's just the way it is all the time. It also is a little bit intimidating. I remember this other time in school where I was like, I wasn't even in trouble, but the vice principal, he, he called me. This was, I think I was in like, um, seventh grade and he goes he just he just said come with me and he again he's walking super brisk briskly towards his office and i'm like trembling like literally trembling in my boots be behind him walking behind him and you know how it is like i i was going through everything that i'd done recently like what did I do? 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 And like the whole way to the, and I couldn't think of anything. I'm like, I didn't do anything. I don't know. Why is he calling me to his office? And then we get to his office and he, he, he like turns, you know, he closes the door or whatever, like go in and sit down. And he's like, you won an award, you know, or something like that. <laughs> like it was something good or you were asked to be part of this something club or something. And I know he did it on purpose. I know that he had me walk like, like that, like without saying anything nice. Mm -hmm. Like he just wanted me to shake in my boots, man. <laughs> At least that's, that's my perception of it is that he wanted me to do that. I'm sure he did. Yeah. Pretty funny. Pretty funny though. I think it's funny how, like when something like that happens, how we automatically feel guilty. Yeah. It's like when I would go through the border, since this is Canadian, um, makes me think of the Canadian border. There's not really anybody in the world that can make you feel guilty like the the Canadian border, or not Canadian border, but just border guards in general. And when they make you feel guilty, they can really make you feel guilty because they can like open up your car. Oh yeah. Make you go wait inside. Need some paper towels here. I might have just screwed up on that uh, cutting of this little thing here but we'll see uh, I think I did I think I put paint where I didn't want to put paint so let's see if we can do this a little differently here yeah bring that back up slightly Anybody else have any funny stories about, well, I guess it's maybe too hard to write your whole story out, but was there a teacher or was there a principal or somebody or, or some, some authority figure in your life that you were really afraid of? I remember back in, in I mean, they don't do this kind of stuff anymore, but when, when I was growing up, they still were, you know, they had like 
a, they would spank kids in school. And they had like, I remember this, the principal, the it, I think it was always the vice principal's job to be the authoritarian kind of like disciplinarian guy. I don't think it was the principal, but the vice principal was always rumored to have a paddle. And then they would say that it was, had holes in it so that it could go faster <laughs> through the air. <laughs> oh my goodness. The kind of stuff that you like talk about and think about when you're a kid is so funny sometimes. Um, Allison Burris has a story from the other side. She says, I am in administration at a school and our students wear uniforms. Oh. Even at places outside of school, kids will check their clothes. Shirt tucked, skirt long enough. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so they're trained really well is what you're saying. Yeah. Trained or traumatized? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Jody says, Sister Patricia, the principal who never smiled. Oh. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think like working in a school can be so challenging, right? Like I remember back in Indianapolis, um, you know, the, some of the, you know, challenges that were there and some of the challenges that I knew that the teachers faced. Um, but you know, sometimes you think, man, like I, I would feel bad for some, some kids just, it felt like they had teachers that just didn't want to be there. It's like, yeah. I don't actually want to be here anymore. I'm just here. And it feels like that's a lose, lose situation because they don't actually like care that much at that point. Maybe they cared earlier and maybe they got jaded or something like that. But it's like, boy, not fun. But then you have other, oh, sorry. No, go for it. Oh, no, I was just going to say, then you have, like, other teachers that, like, so, like, dedicated and bought in, and they, they care so much, man, and you, it's like, you can't pay teachers enough for what they do. Teachers should get paid more, that's a fact. Facts. Don says, Sister Delphine, you put huge red X's on everyone's papers in first grade. Oh... Oh man. Kylie says, my gym teacher is so aggressive and one day he couldn't hear me say how many push-ups I got so he yelled at me in front of the whole gym and everyone could hear it. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's funny though too, like I think about that because I don't mean to say it's funny, but I mean to say that I think what's interesting in life, as I, the older that I've gotten, I, I've realized, you know, like there are legitimate reasons, you know, people get along or don't get along or, you know, like, like you do something wrong or, or somebody gets hurt or something like that. Like, we all have to deal with all of that stuff. like hard relationships or you know something bad that happens but then on top of that we have to deal with things that are totally common but they're they can cause problems in relationships too like miscommunication <laughs> like like that story that you just said Kylie was like they just didn't hear what you said and so they had a reaction and it was nothing that was bad about like what you had said or not, you know, they, they maybe thought you didn't say something or whatever, but like that's an, a drastic example of somebody maybe like getting really mad or like doing something. But like how often does that happen with us where somebody says something and we hear it wrong or we think that they meant something else and then we get our hurt feelings hurt or we get mad at them because of whatever it was. And it's actually like, oh, later you realize, oh, you said that. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I thought you said this. It's like that thing we watched about trust. And they're like, when you're with somebody you really trust, you can say the wrong thing. But because they trust you, they interpret your intentions the right way. You know? Yeah, totally. If you don't trust each other, then 
then you're like perceiving Suspicious. everything yeah. suspiciously. Yeah, I know. That is totally the case. Well, there's a, um, there's also a saying I heard a long time ago, not a saying, but a, maybe a more like a statistic where they did a study on people and they, they determined that as people, we, we, we take, if, if there's a neutral statement, 85% of the time we perceive it as a negative statement. It's just neutral information, but we, if it's a, like we, we, we receive it negatively and that's a lot. 85% of the time it's neutral information and we receive it negatively. That's kind of crazy. Um, Vera says, I remember a terrifying math teacher, but he made sure I learned math. Avoiding detentions was an incentive to pay attention. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you know, like sometimes what I've also found is that sometimes the people that, that um, you know, you can be like really nice and not care too, right? Like sometimes people that don't, have any sense of discipline or or that kind of thing like turns out that they don't actually care what happens so they're fine with you kind of like floating through life or whatever that's not good either Marcy says I get in trouble for that a lot of work I'm very neutral in my emails oh interesting Brenda comments, Bob Ross, question mark? Bob Ross? <laughs> He's the What's... anti Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here, I'll show you. I, I'm i not Bob Ross. <laughs> I ain't no Bob Ross. <laughs> now, I've, I've always thought, like, who am I? Like, because, can I, should I say I'm the anti Bob Ross? That doesn't sound very nice, does no, it? it? Doesn't. I'm not the anti Bob Ross, but what would you call me if I, if he's got all that hair and I don't? Like, like the Bob Ross oxymoron? That's a weird way to say it. I'm sure somebody out there who's smart will think of something that's better than my ideas. Now let's see here. I am going to put in a little bit of saturated color here. I need to get some clean yellow. Some of my yellow is a little bit tainted. And I might actually need to clean off my my palette a bit too because I've got a fair amount of stuff from the last painting still in there. Flint says, uh, my first grade teacher yelled at me because I fell. Oh man. <laughs> I have some, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. I have a, like a memory of a kid in my class asking to go to the bathroom in music mm -hmm. and the music teacher not letting him go to the bathroom and he had to like sit on the piano and p keep playing or something. Oh. And then all of a sudden he goes to the bathroom while he's there and like how humiliating. It's crazy. I think that sometimes teachers, that's about trust right there, right? Yeah, no. It's like, I don't trust that you're telling me the truth. I think that you're probably lying or wanting to get out of class, you know, which probably happens a lot too. Makes you think about what we're like, right? Like, you know, as, you know, like I'm a dad, so I've got a girl. And I mean, I know that there there have been times when when she's, you know, like, like I don't think that there's, you know, any reason for her to have had reactions, but like where she's like really afraid and like really afraid of me, right? It's like, 
And I think, huh, what's that mean? Like, is it just something that's kind of in us? But then it's also made me think like, is there, like, do I need to like think about how I come across? Like, am I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind if she's, um, you know, rightfully like kind of respectful, but sometimes it's come across like she's legit afraid of me, you know, like afraid that I'm going to do something. I'm like, huh, maybe it's just fear. I don't know. But it makes me think about like, have I been harsh in my language or something like that? Like where she would have a reason to think that I am not a safe person. I don't know. Peter left me. Peter left me. Everybody help, help. Peter left and I don't know what to do. Uh, last, last week during the marathon, Peter had to sneak out to get something to eat. I was updating Renee on the stream. Oh, okay. Last week, yeah, Peter, I, we, we went six hours and Peter made it about four and a half before he's like, man, I gotta get something to eat here. <laughs> oh, that was fun, wasn't it, last week? That was, that was really fun. Peter's like, Peter, by so much. Peter, was, Peter was trying to convince me that we should do it. He's like, let's do it again next week. I was like, no, man, I can't. Well, I can't, also man. That, like, um, we might have done it in a bad time for people too. Yeah, really early, I know. But this seems to work out well because we got 900 people watching right now. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. No, well, no. welcome you guys. We're super, super glad that you're here. This is a painting that we uh, are doing actually. And if you want to join us, we're probably going to do this same thing next week. Um, you can text our number. I will email. I will text you right when I'm going live. I'll keep you updated. That's one of the things that we like to do is is let people know what we're doing. But um, you could get your. This is a reference photo from Wendy. This is her her uh, picture that I'm painting right here. So what we'll probably do again. We'll, we always are evaluating things, but this is the the second painting that I'm doing. The first one we already gave away and um, then we started this one but if you want to join us next week you want to come back we'd love to have you and we would love to uh, give you the chance of having your picture painted mm -hmm. so text us at 855 this is my number 855-588-4278 and we'll make sure that we send you a text that's that's the easiest way. And then of course, subscribe to the channel. And hey, if you could do me a huge favor, and if you're enjoying this, just press the like button, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I say that because sometimes we get goofy people that come in and say mean things and then they, their voice is often heard more than others. So just do us a favor and, and get, get over and hit, hit the like button. If, you do like it. If you don't, then don't do anything. <laughs> just joking. That's a little bit. No, I'm just joking. If no, you don't no. like it, Shay, yeah, I don't get that. That's okay. Yo, we've had a lot of trolls uh, this evening. Today. Which is to be expected. Yeah. yeah. Trolls. That's such a funny name, isn't it, man? That's what we call them. <laughs> I know. I guess it's appropriate, isn't it? It's like, oh boy. That's why we need Peter. Last, it's so funny, man. I just think it's, life is so dang ironic. Last week we thought, well, maybe we'll get a bunch of people and I actually hired my nephew to kind of help yeah. make sure that the the stream was okay and we didn't have too many weird people come on and like say weird things like and try to scare people or, you know, inappropriate things. And no one all night like came on like that at all. It was like totally dead, totally, I mean, totally, fine it wasn't there was no weird things and then <laughs> it's just funny because i had him there like the whole night <laughs> too so then we're like okay well we won't worry about that anymore good thing peter's good at doing more than one thing at a time i guarantee if if 
if for some reason I was in charge of the stream, oh, I don't know, man. Like if I was in charge of like what Peter's in charge of, um, it would be not good. That's all. It just wouldn't be good. There'd be some bad things that that would get neglected. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna do a little bit of. It looks so good, Jed. Cool. Yeah, looks great. Awesome, man. Thanks for the encouragement, Peter. Mm -hmm. You're looking good too. Man, you know what I should do is I should have that other camera pointed over at Peter. And then I could just switch to him every once in a while just for fun. At random times? Yeah, yeah, just randomly. Like when he's picking his nose. Peter. I don't think so. <laughs> if John L saw you picking your nose right now, that would really be gross, man. Yeah, we would, <laughs> we'd have to break it off. Oh, alive. I'm just joking. What if I was picking my nose? You guys only see one of my hands. Where's my other hand? What if my, my, my voice started sounding nasally? That'd be kind of suspicious. Oh man, how funny. I think life is, you know, oh, we said this the other day. Like, what would life be if you didn't have, if there was no humor? Yeah. <laughs> and somebody, somebody was like, it wouldn't be life. Like, you, we couldn't live without humor. Yeah. I think that that's totally, totally true. Yeah, these sunsets are so fun. You know, you get these really vibrant colors that pop out and... Then you have all a lot of subtle things. This is actually a pretty good example of what I was talking about earlier about how you 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 make a painting that has vibrant colors but you also have more subtle grayish colors um, because the grays actually make the other stuff look better if everything was as bright as the fully saturated stuff then it wouldn't um it wouldn't actually read as bright doug greenman says you're really making me laugh i really need it tonight thank you oh good <laughs> oh man Doug, you make us laugh too, bro. I gotta say, like some of your comments, like I, oh, I I'll like chuckle at them. Doug has a good sense of humor. Yeah. You know what's funny is like, I, I feel like I'm the kind of guy that will, I don't know what it is, but I don't laugh out loud that much. Like I don't go ha ha ha. You know, like I'm not that kind of person, but there are certain people that can make, that I'll get around them and I'll, I will, I'll just laugh, 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 like, and I'm, I'm with you with that, like, Doug, a little bit. It's like, every once in a while, it's like I, I get around people or, or something happens that makes me laugh or I hear something and it actually makes me kind of get that, like, good on laugh. And I go like, oh my goodness, I needed that. I didn't realize how much I needed that, but I really needed that laughter. Like they, that old, do you guys remember that? Um, I don't know, Peter, you're probably too young for even my, man. What? There was, there was a thing called Reader's Digest. Have you ever heard of that? I don't know what Reader's Digest is. You do? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's good. Inside of Reader's Digest, there was, there was something called um, Laughter, the Best Medicine. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Seriously? Are you just making that up to make me feel better? No, I'm not. I mean, I, I haven't seen them myself, but I've read, I've read about them in books. <laughs> okay, okay. You read about it in history books? Yeah, I know what. <laughs> okay, now I'm not feeling so good, man. Peter's got that back kind of like, he, he like makes you feel good and then he like jabs you with that like <laughs> dagger in your heart. like. Oh yeah, yeah, laughter the best me medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read about that in my history book. <laughs> I didn't say it was a history book. <laughs> I didn't put words in my mouth. <laughs> uh, uh, funny. Okay, so let's see. So we're we're 
on pace here. I, I'm looking at my time and I've got, I've got a little bit of time left. I'm gonna just look at this and kind of decide what, what are the things that need to be done. I, I wanna break this up a little bit over here um, because there is a little bit of light coming through over here and I think it will help make it look a little bit airier. So, and then maybe I'll try to do something like that up here too. Sometimes what I find with um, painting is, and with, with some of this stuff, like as I'm going, I'm, I'm like doing a little bit of guesswork and figuring stuff out. So it's like, I try something, it may or may not work exactly like I want. And then if it doesn't work exactly like I want, then um, I might have to undo part of it. You know, I might have to, change something um but sometimes it's hard to visualize everything before you actually do it so i find like it's a part of painting that i if i had everything planned out from the beginning maybe i wouldn't need to do it but i'm not that smart i can't see ahead that far Heather says, you've done it again. Husband almost home from work and I'm trying to cook dinner and I just came back after five minutes. This painting is incredible again. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. that, Heather. And Bayan Mo says, I love it so much. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Allison just ordered some more Princeton Catalyst brushes. Can't wait to get them. Oh, awesome. I know. I don't know if you noticed, but I broke two new ones out tonight because... I, I had a bunch in the water or something like that and I didn't have enough in my, so I, I just opened a little two pack. Hey, two pack, not two pock. <laughs> oh, that was a little rap humor. Do, 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 do. Speaking of humor, have you ever thought what would it be like to stand on a stage and like try to be a comedian? Can you imagine the daunting task of that? Like I, I think of myself as like, I at least laugh at my own jokes, like, but that doesn't cut it as a comedian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have to make this whole crowd laugh. laughing at your own jokes is yeah, it's like pretty lame. Yeah. I know you got like, how many people are in there? I guess it depends on the venue, but man, it's like the people who are good comedians, they're pretty stinking amazing when you think about it. So like I said, I don't know if, if uh, if, if we've said it recently, I don't think too recently, so I'll say it again right now, but if you send your, um, send us a text at 855-588-4278, which, hey, somebody should say what that would spell if you spelled it out. Next time, I gotta put it in there. Peter, are you gonna put it in there next time? What, love for art? Yeah. Well, I mean, can they, I know can that the it's letters love for art? well, no, but it's just so cool to see it, man. It is cool. <laughs> that if you're, you don't have to be using well, can you use? Phone. Can you put both of them? No, no, no. Every phone will like say, like you can see if you pull out your phone right now, like you can see those. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not as easy to to know what the numbers are. Like you, you have to look closer and be like, oh, that's a, you know, uh, V is eight, you know, yeah, yeah. like that kind of thing. Yeah, that's spelled love for art. But what about 855, you gotta throw that part in there. No, 855, yeah, 855 is just the straight number. 
Oh, gotcha. Eight five 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 eight eight four two seven eight, and we're and we'll uh, we'll text you. I mean, next week when I'm going live, we'll send you a text right off five minutes beforehand, and we'll give you the link right there. We'd also love it if you if you do love this, subscribe to our channel, and like our videos and stuff like that. And uh, we'd like to be friends. Thank you. But. We're glad you're here. And man, we've got some faithful people out there. I, I, I give a shout out to, man, our, our Acrylic University members. Yeah. I, I, would, I was just about to start naming names, but I know I would forget, forget names. names. And, yeah, and then I feel bad. But okay. you know who you are, man. I know that there are people that have been here on every one of our live streams, yeah, they which is yeah it's crazy. so awesome and kind of crazy like like man i can't believe that you did we how did we dupe you into <laughs> <laughs> i don't get it like did i promise at some point that you would win like a million dollars or something like i probably did i probably said something like and that's why you're showing up and then like yeah. someday you'll be like where's the million dollars that you promised and i'll be like Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean that. <laughs> that was just a joke. Oh man. Okay, so it's getting getting close to time now. On this one, unless you've changed your mind, we already have somebody who wants this, yep. and it is Wendy because she already. This is her her photograph from Lake Ontario, Canada. Man, if you knew Canada was so amazing, you'd probably be living there, wouldn't you? I know half the people are like, man, look at that. That's Canada. That's Canada right there. Canada. Canada. You know, I always think it's funny because Canadians know quite a bit about the US. But the average U.S. citizen, like the average American, is like, oh, like so ignorant about Canada. It's like, it's actually kind of funny when you like get and you realize it, because like, like the only thing that a, a, any American, they'll be like, eh, oh, you're from Canada, eh? You know, it's like the only thing they know to say. <laughs> Sometimes people think that all Canadians live in igloos. <laughs> it's like, it's like bad. Um, like, like, oh my goodness. Um, Diane Agreement says, we look forward to this every week, week, learning so much from you. Thank you for doing this. Oh, well, thank you. I, I would have shouted you guys out. You're, you're some of the people that I, that I can remember because you guys usually comment and say, say some stuff every once in a while. And, um. So I, I was thinking about you guys as some of the people who've been here pretty much every time. Mary D says maple syrup and bacon. <laughs> maple syrup and bacon, yeah, Canadian bacon, uh, of course, mm -hmm. which is a that's a that's a pretty good um, pizza topping. Yeah, a pretty good pizza topping, but it's also it's a movie um, with John Candy, and it's like an '80s um, um, what do you call it comedy. And uh, the funny thing is it starts out with like these, the border people are like, the US people are like, we're, we're concerned about the Canadians. We think that they're going to attack the United States. And they say, well, why do you think that? And they're like, well, 95% of them live with, they've, they've, they've moved 95% of them are, are living within, you know, five miles of the border or 50 miles of the border, something like that. It's, which is true. It's like 95% of the population of Canada lives like really close to the border because the upper reaches of Canada are so dang cold. But it's, it's pretty, that whole movie is all about like the, kind of like the funny things that, that we think about Canada and all that. Janice says, yes, and it's snow year round. 
Yeah, 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 totally. Well, you do, don't you? <laughs> yeah, it's... Just a dual citizen, so. Yeah, I'm a dual citizen. If you missed that part of it earlier. I'm proud to be an American and Canadian. I'm... I'm... Americanada. My wife is a full-blooded Canadian. American-Canadian. American-Canadian. There we go. I, I did marry a Canadian. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Too much fun, guys. This has been too much fun. Okay, well, I think that I'm pretty close to calling this one done. And this has been a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna switch my camera. All right. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. It's been really fun. I don't know if you guys have a good time like I have, but I've had a blast. And I'm so, so glad that we started doing this however many months ago to hang out on Friday nights. But thanks for making it fun. Thanks for being here. Remember, if you, if you just joined us at the end, we do this every week. So subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and text us at 855-588-4278, uh, and you, we'll send you a text when we're going live next week, and it'll be like an automatic thing five minutes before we go out. So anyways, love you all. Hope you're doing well. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll catch you next week. Adios.